Welcome into the five guys here on the Five Reasons YouTube channel. I'm Ethan Skolnick. You can follow me at Ethan J. Skolnick and at Five Reasons Sports. As always, I'm here with Alex Dono. We're here every Tuesday and Thursday. You can follow him at Alex Dono. Before we get to today's episode about the Miami Heat, a word from one of our sponsors. Hey, it's Ethan Skolnick for the Five Reasons Sports Network. We've got a great new sponsor that fits with us perfectly. It's called Jerseys305.com. That's Jerseys305.com. This is your home for dead stock and vintage jerseys from the Heat, Panthers, Dolphins, Marlins, and the other local teams. Their mission was born from a passion for wearing jerseys of the old styles and the past players. Jerseys 305 aims to make every fan stand out from the crowd with unique pieces that you don't commonly see anymore. Maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, but not today. And Jerseys 305 was created by the fans, for the fans. They're diehards just like you. In fact, they're probably listening to this episode right now so check them out jerseys 305 their partnership with five reason sports celebrating with a 10 percent discount on the next purchase using the code five at checkout unlock your exclusive savings on the entire vintage collection well this may or may not be a vintage miami heat season so far it does not look like it um alex we will get into where they stand in the standings and the play-in and all that stuff the first couple of announcements about tonight uh they are in atlanta we'll have our guy eternal bass he was at shoot around he's been planning to join us here during the episode he got a chance to talk to bam jovich and others no duncan robinson tonight he has not looked right lately uh that facet syndrome with his back he's not been the same player over the last four or five games um, I wouldn't be surprised if he shut down for longer than one game. Terry Rozier with the neck issue that gave him trouble in the last game and he only played 22 minutes. He is questionable. So all of a sudden now, Alex, they finally get Rozier back. Excuse me, get uh, Hero back. And now Robinson and Rozier are hurt. And I, look, I, <laughs> this has just been one of those seasons. And they may end up with 46, 47 wins. I, you know, I projected 47 before the season, so... It's hard for me to pivot and say this has been the most disappointing season ever if they end up hitting my win total or coming close to it. But as we talked about last week before the Indiana game, before the Philadelphia game, uh, they've had opportunities. And, you know, it's just I, I think one of the things that's been a problem, and I actually spoke to someone in the front office about this who said this. He says it's almost better if you have a player who is just out, just out for the season sort of like the Knicks have had with Randall, right? Like, And then you just deal with it. You pivot. You figure out a way to play without him. I go back to the 99 Knicks when Ewing got hurt. They made it all the way to the finals. It's called the Ewing Theory. Um, I think Bill Simmons coined it. Uh, yep. But the problem with the Heat is it's like it's it's two guys in, two guys out. Two guys in, two guys out. And because of that, you're talking about 35 different starting lineups, uh, probably a 36th tonight is my guess. And you just can't get any continuity. And it's like guys do not know what their roles are. And then when you have a 1A who has not played like a 1A in a lot of games, you get inconsistency. And I just think that's where we're at right now. And I think anybody waiting for a magical run, I, 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 I'm not seeing it at the moment, Alex. Where, where do you stand on this? I mean, the, the idea, of, if anyone thinks they're going to, you know, repeat what they did last year and go through the play and into the NBA finals, uh, that feels like the odds of lightning striking you twice, right? I know it's not impossible the way some people say it is, but it's unlikely, very unlikely. You know, you mentioned this not being like a vintage version of the Miami Heat. It's the same vintage as last year, though, except I don't think they're going to have the same sort of postseason success. And I, I was listening to a, a recent episode, I think it was your latest episode of Five on the Floor, and you brought up something that really scared me, the idea that the Heat could kind of become – what the Atlanta Hawks are right now, where they're like a yearly play in type of team. And that, and that, that, that really makes me think that, you know, Pat and Andy are going to have to take a long, hard look at the nucleus and construction of this roster and, and really figure out how to move forward. And it's not to say that this is the exact team, uh, same team as last year. You know, there were some notable losses. I think Terry Rozier is a notable gain, you know, and I'd, I'd like to see him part of this formula for a little while. Uh, you know, after that Indiana game, Jimmy sounded as defeated as I was, which wasn't really a good thing. The way he was talking, we, we usually get that. Oh, don't worry. We're going to give him hell. We're going to we're going to come out and get through the play and do the same thing. He sounded just like a lot more defeated version of of Jimmy Butler than we're used to hearing, which is a little bit troubling to me. Uh, but, you know, you talk about having opportunities. Um 
what what's the signature regular season win for this team? Was it that home win against the Knicks without Randall uh, and shorthanded Knicks a couple of weeks ago? Like I, I don't know, I don't know what it was. Like, home, I guess they... home, home win on Christmas without Embiid uh, against yeah. against the Sixers. Yeah, Cleveland. I mean, a lot of their signature wins. The other team did not have one of their two or three best players. Um, and I know the Heat have been shorthanded, but that is the point. It's funny. I said to to Alex on the podcast last night on Five on the Floor. I'm like. I can't remember who they beat because they haven't beaten any good, like like where did the 43 wins come from because they haven't beaten any good teams like they didn't beat OKC they didn't beat Denver they didn't beat Boston okay uh I mean they've got losses all across them they didn't beat Minnesota so like the best team they didn't beat the Clippers um so I'm like okay they didn't beat elite teams and then they had the terrible loss to Memphis when Memphis had nobody and you you were healthy the terrible loss to Washington. Um, so I, I just, I, you know, it's to me, it's like, okay, I'm trying to figure out. I guess they've kind of beaten the sort of the middle of the league, uh, middle right. to bottom middle of the league, the Atlantas, those kind of teams. They fatten up on some of of those. But, you know, when I talked, I talked to someone in the front office yesterday, and we had a long conversation, and I, I he's not defeated, this person. Um, okay. Frustrated that they haven't been able to get it all together. But, you know, he's like, look, it, it resets, okay? I mean, we'll know who we play, you know, in a few days. We'll know. It, it's, you know, he's expecting the play-in, most likely. It's just the odds are for the play-in. And we'll know who we play. We'll know who we have to beat. We'll know about the team in front of us. And then, you know, hopefully we move on to a playoff series and we can focus on this team. And I want to get to this comment from Jimmy J. We appreciate the commenters. You're all summer long. All I heard from you guys was the East didn't get any better. Now we know everyone but the Heat got better. Actually. The East didn't get that much better. Um, Boston got better. Right. Milwaukee, Milwaukee, did Milwaukee we better. thought, got better. <laughs> yeah, but the Heat did not, Alex. Actually, no. the Heat thought Milwaukee got worse. And I and, and oh, okay. I think it's playing out now because of the defense and all that. Yeah. I get Cleveland is kind of the same. They had a great 18-2 and two run, and then they run into a lot of injuries. The Knicks are somewhat better, but again, because of injuries – um, and Philadelphia actually is worse than last year because of Embiid's injury. Yeah. So I, I don't think the East, like it's not, this is not an East problem. This is a heat inconsistency problem. I think that's really it. Look, the heat had 44 wins last year and they ended up in the seventh spot. And this year they'll probably have 46 wins and end up in the seven or eight spot. I mean, it's not so like, I think it's like, like to me though, Boston getting better like that, that would have been enough for me to sound alarm bells. Now I, I, I mm. respect, you know, you, you talked me off a ledge a little bit on five on the floor last night, because, you know, I, I, it's easy for me to be reactionary and say like, Hey, because you know, you squeak by Boston last year, they go out and get better in the off season. Mm. The heat should have done their part. Like I, I know they spent the entire summer trying to get a, a certain player that they didn't get because of that front right. office in Portland. Uh, so I don't know if you know being a little bit more aggressive on that would have changed anything for the Heat because Cronin clearly didn't want to do business with them. But uh, I, I do think it's time to take a long hard – assuming they don't win the title this year, assuming they don't run all the way through a championship out of the play, I think it's time to take a long hard look at this nucleus because it, it may be – I feel like this nucleus, and yeah, I'm talking about Jimmy. I feel like this version of the Miami Heat is probably peaked already. And you, you've already been up to the summit, and now you're on the way down, and it's not going to get better until you start fresh again. Well, I because if you're saying that, that's because you think Jimmy's peaked. Because that's yep. really it. Because the, the supporting cast is better than it was last year. Like, I, I mean, even with the injuries. Like, okay, I don't know what Duncan's status is going to be now or Terry's status, but provided that you have both of them, Duncan is a better player than he was last year or was prior to this injury. You have Rozier over Lowry. That's an improvement. You've got Hakez, who has hit the wall, but again, you didn't have him last year. You have Jovic playing, didn't happen last year. Kevin Love is playing at a higher level this year. So who did you lose? You lost Struis and Vincent? I mean, they were incredibly inconsistent during the regular season. Like, I, this is not... But to me, this is not about this team getting worse. It's about Jimmy's not a one A anymore, and I and and I and I think that we have the whole season kind of said, okay, he'll turn it on, he'll turn it on, he'll turn it on. Well, now not only does it not appear he can turn it on just because of whatever age, where anything along those lines, but also the officials are not working in his favor either. Like since the All Star break, he's not getting some of those same calls that he used to get. So, I, so if you don't have a one A. You don't have a build. I mean, that's the thing. Like what the Heat always say is, okay, and uh, there's a couple of members of the front office that always say this. 
you got to get one of those guys. You got to get one of those guys. You do what it has to take to get one of those guys. And I know Heat fans are gonna say, "Well, they could have gotten Dame. He's one of those guys." Okay, I get it. But yeah. they they got they did get Jimmy Butler in 2019. He is one of those guys. We didn't know at the time he was gonna be at the level he got to, but he was one of those guys. Now the question is, do they have one of those guys now? I mean, uh, you know, it's funny because this person was saying to me, he's like, during the Big Three era, we knew we had the best player on the floor every night, mm -hmm. every night. We had the best player on the floor. Now, there have been times during the Jimmy Butler build that the Heat had the best player on the floor. That was the case in the playoffs against Milwaukee last year, even against Giannis. It was the case against Tatum. The Heat have not had the best player on the floor for the majority of the games this year, the large majority of the games. And if you look at Jimmy's numbers against top 10 defenses, they're ordinary. He's shooting like 44% against those teams averaging 18 points. Like, I know it's not all about offense, but also, steals are down. His is some of that stuff. Some of the other metrics are down. So I don't want to pile on Jimmy here because Jimmy has been tremendous, and Jimmy saved this franchise. Like this was a Hassan yes. Whiteside franchise before Jimmy came. But we have to acknowledge decline, okay? And this is decline. I mean, Dwayne declined. Jimmy's declining. It it happens. The only guy in the world who seems like he doesn't decline is the guy out in Los Angeles right now. And uh, so who knows if he had stayed, if he never would have declined what my Miami Heat would have looked like. But that's just the case right now. And, and, and so, Alex, that's why I think that we can talk about the margins. But if Jimmy does not show up at a high level, they're not going anywhere. They're just no. not. And, Bam and, is and, not and, that and, and the work and, and the workload is going to be so massive now because, yeah, Jimmy had to basically drive himself to the ground last year to go from the play in to the finals. Like the, the idea of doing that two years in a row, first of all, for Jimmy being a year older and still having that workload on his resume from last year, uh, not to mention just you know the, the certain fortune. And yes, I, I can appreciate the supporting cast getting better from last year. You're still asking a lot from these guys. You know, if they're going to help Jimmy carry them to the finals again through the play in. But, you know, to talk about this era, we get this question from Aaron about where the Jimmy era ranks in heat history. I mean, as far as like the, the amount of sustained, haven't gotten over the hump, but, you know, the heat have only gotten over the hump three times in their history. And, and two of them were obviously in the same era. I put it, I mean, distant behind, but probably right behind the big three era, Ethan, because, you know, it wasn't like they, they had the championship run in 2006, but that wasn't yeah. like that sustained long of an era. There were some ups and downs. Obviously, you had the the earlier Riley days in the 90s so where you weren't getting past yeah. the Eastern Con Like like this era, you, two finals appearances and a, a lot of overachieving. This era, it, it's not big three, but it, it may be second place for me. Yeah, it's either two or three. I I, I think, and, and I don't want to I don't want to disrespect Zoe or Timmy. Um, and in a lot of ways, that is the most important era in Heat history because defining, that's the one era. that got the yeah. franchise off the ground. And Zoe is look, Zoe is the standard holder on all this stuff. Like we talk about all these other guys, but this all started with Zoe's decision to join the Heat and their decision to go get him, okay? And I talked to Zoe about this at a fashion show event this year, about the promises that he made to Mickey and Pat at the time, and he kept his promises. Um, but they did not, uh, they didn't convert, okay? Now, part of it was Jordan, but part of it was they didn't get past the Knicks three out of four years, and they were favored in all four series. So, so I, I know they all went to the deciding game, but that was a frustrating era. I, it comes down to this era or the Shaq, Dwayne era as second. And I, I tend to agree with you that I think, I think it'll be more of this era because even though you had the championship and you did have a great season the year before that ended mostly because Dwayne, you know, tore his rib cage muscle, you know, in game five against Detroit in the Eastern conference finals, uh, that ended so badly. Uh, and it ended quickly. Okay. And Shaq was so, I mean, all the smiling and the jovial stuff with Shaq and the heat. Now it was not like that at the end. I mean, he was blaming Chris Quinn and Ricky Davis. So I, I just think that to me, this is too. The Ricky Davis, Chris Quinn was the second best. There. See, Ryan Oliver hit it. Uh, I, I, I just, I, I think that this has been, look, this has been a tremendous era. Okay. I don't think anybody expected the heat who were basically irrelevant post you know lebron leaving and especially then Dwayne leaving um you know i don't think anybody expected you know this era to end up with what you said you know two finals appearances and three conference finals but you know we can we'll look back and say should they have added to it more um should they have given jimmy more help 
I just know at this stage, he cannot carry. He cannot carry. I, 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 this is not he will not carry. It's he cannot carry. I think that's a key distinction. I just don't see it. I don't see it. Like the pump fakes, the, it's all this. I'm not saying he can't have great games. He will probably have a couple of great games here as we go forward. But every time we've said this season, this is a Jimmy game. This is a Jimmy game. This is a Jimmy game. He's going to get up for this one. He gives you 17 points. I mean, I, that, that's just the way it's been all season yeah, long. And, and, and it's frustrating because it seems like like the other the other day against Indiana, it's like the, the, the games when when Jimmy does step up, he doesn't get enough mm -hmm. help. And then there are other games where the supporting cast steps up and Jimmy doesn't. That's been another kind right. of frustrating inconsistencies. Yep, absolutely. All right, let's uh, we're gonna get to our guest, Eternal. Uh, our guy, Eternal Bass, he was actually in Atlanta today, uh, credentialed to cover shoot arounds. He'll be at the game tonight. He got a chance to talk to a bunch of people, so we're going to bring him on. Before we do, I want to mention a great sponsor of the Five Reasons Sports Network, Water Cleanup of Florida. You can find him at WCUFL.com. That's WCUFL.com, based in Boca Raton. They service the entire Tri County area. Your one stop water and mold cleanup shop. We always tell you get the preventative stuff done, leak detection. That's the most important thing. Because once it happens, I mean, they'll do a great job fixing it, but you're still going to have to pay for it. Go, go go in and get this done before you have to deal with the insurance companies afterwards. They have annual memberships, all kinds of, of cool stuff there to get you involved. They're just good people, and they're huge Miami Heat fans as well. Like the warehouse in Boca uh, off of Clintmore is basically like a, it's, it's a shrine to the Miami Heat. So check it out. Water Cleanup of Florida, WCUFL.com. Again, that's WCUFL.com. All right, let's bring on our guest here. Uh, he was in Atlanta today. Look at that. Actually, he's he's on the he's on the face of the earth right now. He's um, in orbit. He's he's up there with the eclipse. He, 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 he's in orbit. All right, so you went to shoot around today. How doom and gloomy was it? It wasn't. Uh, when I got there, they had a very long shoot around, very long practice. They didn't practice yesterday, um, so I got there, um, and they probably was practicing a good thirty more minutes before we were let in. Um, you can hear guys clapping. You can hear guys joking around. We got in, in there, and you could actually lay eyes on them. It was the same thing. There's a bunch of guys laughing, joking around, um, kind of keeping their spirits up. Um, and you can kind of feel that when, you know, we were talking to Terry, uh, Duncan, and Bam, and Nico. Um, these guys don't seem like they're lost on the season. Um, doesn't mean that they won't struggle, right? I'm not going to – not here to sunshine pump, right? <laughs> Uh, but as far as the camaraderie amongst the team, it still seems to be pretty high. So no mm -hmm. Duncan, uh, no Duncan tonight. I'll let, I'll jump in. So I just want to get to this real quick. Uh, it, did, did Spo say anything specific? Obviously we know he's, he's no timetables, right? That should be his album cover. No timetables. Um, did he say anything specific about, uh, about Duncan or about where I know Duncan's not playing tonight. Uh, but about where Terry stands for tonight. So I did not hear what Spo had to say today. He was not amongst the people that I uh, had a chance to talk to. Okay. Well, my I, I I can tell you. I you know what I can say it for you. It doesn't matter. Uh, Duncan, <laughs> there's no timetable. Uh, it's day to day. Uh, we'll evaluate as we go forward based on how he feels. Terry will be a game time decision. He might warm up with the intent to play. Thank you, Alex. Go ahead. I just did the Spolster thing. Go ahead. I, I that was per you channeled Spo. So I do want to know, Eternal, uh, who which players did you talk to and what stood out? So the players I got the chance to talk to was Terry first, um, then Nico, then Bam, and I and in between that I got to talk to a very high level um executive today that I am not at uh <laughs> I'm not in liberty to share. <laughs> Off the record, eh? <laughs> right, yeah. Um, but Terry, I mean Terry just you know talked about like you know, not wanting to put the guys in a bad position. Uh, he did say his neck was feeling a little bit better, but as Ethan said, um, he is a game time decision. Um, they do have a game tomorrow. Uh, so he may not play tonight um, and play tomorrow. If he does play tonight, he may not play tomorrow. So it's kind of one of those things. But, you know, Terry talked about, you know, I asked him, you know, how did it feel to finally get back into that groove of how he was playing, you know, during those Charlotte days um, and then having to, you know, have this happen and how he's managing his body and, you know, just trying to take it day by day is what he said. Um, and just trying to be smart about it as they're gearing up um, for the potential either play in or playoffs or both. So uh, to, to that end, um, if Duncan's not playing tonight, 
there's a two guard who used to start for this team, and uh, he's available. He's not going to start Patty Mills, is he? I mean, oh, you're talking, I guess are you talking I, about DeLon, right? They used to, just to play they for used to start, used to play for Atlanta this Hawks? team. No, no, no. I, I, I meant for the Heat, but I'm just saying, like, like he can't. I mean, he, he. But if Rozier doesn't play, it's a whole other story because you got two backcourt slots open, and then I, there's all kinds of things they could do. He can start Hawkins. Honestly, he can start Hawkins and Hero and go that direction. Um, is Tyler Hero going to start tonight? What do you think? Based on the fact that Duncan's not starting. Oh. Uh. I would I would say this, Ethan. We know how Spo is. Spo is a, a creature of habit, right? So we mm-hmm. could see two things. We could see Tyler start, or we could see Tyler come off the bench. We could still see that. You know, uh, it just depends on whether you have Patty Mills running the ship, right, as the Terry replacement, right, or you have DeLon Wright running the ship as the Terry replacement. Um, and, you know, who they put um, next to them as correspondent. So, I don't know. I mean, it, it very well could be Tyler. They are in the thick of things. They got four games left. They have to win these these games, or five, I think, one of them. Um, but they have to win out in order to still get the sixth seed. And that that was that was talked about a little bit around shoot around. Um, so, do they know the? Ra- I want to get back to the Tyler thing in a second. But do they know? like the sixth seed? Like what has to happen? Because like we do, because we're following mm-hmm. it. But I feel like the players don't necessarily because i'll tell you what i the front office people i've talked to don't necessarily think it's happening they they you know they're expecting playing just based on the odds you got to win out and then basically philadelphia has got to lose to well you need philadelphia to lose to orlando um that's because that's the one difficult game on the schedule and you need indiana to lose two out of three and they don't have a very difficult schedule the rest of the way i mean the the odds are significantly against them i I, i'll just say that Uh, do they know um that or are they blind to that or 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 what? I think I think absolutely the coaches know. Um, you can kind of hear some of the conversations based off of some of the media people talking to some of the guys, uh, but I, I'm sure that they're aware. I don't think it's something yeah. that they aren't aware of, but I think it's one of those things, Ethan, Alex, where they're trying to take it one game at a time. So be yeah. one and oh, then one and oh, then one and oh, kind of thing. Alex, and, I, I want to flip. I want to flip this to you. I want to flip something Eternal said. Yeah, sure. We've wasted it. We've wait to you. We this we've wasted a ton of time this year talking about whether Tyler Hero starts or not, and then other circumstances come in that change the equation and make all the conversation completely moot. Okay, let me ask you, Alex. Would you? You've got four games left. Like I know, suppose a creature of habit is Eternal said, and he likes to keep his bench intact, and he was bringing Tyler off the bench. Don't you have to start Tyler Hero tonight? Like regardless of what the other. Everything else we've talked about, and people think he's better coming off the bench or whatever. I mean, don't you, don't you have to if you don't have Duncan Robinson? Yeah, I would be. Uh, I'm not gonna say I'd be shocked if he doesn't, but I, I agree with you. I, I think you have to start him tonight. I, I think you have to. Uh, and and I, I wanted to ask you, Eternal, because you mentioned one game at a time. I'm actually glad to hear that the team is not gloom and doom and that they're smiling and joking around. Cause I, you know, for, for as, as bad as Sunday was, you have to put that stuff behind you. Uh, so how do you break down the game for tonight? The heat are going up against the perennial play in Atlanta Hawks. The heat are four and a half point favorites on the road. Do you think they get it done? I think so. I think so. I think it's going to be a tough task. I mean, they got Trey young, I believe. Is coming back tonight. No, um, no, he's not. I don't think he's he back. is. He, he, he's okay. back practicing. He's back practicing, but okay. but not but not expected to play tonight. So, right. but they, they eat Trey alive anyway. Like that's like Trey's always the least of their problems. I feel like like he's he and Lamelo Ball are two guys that don't don't play particularly well against Miami. So, well, I mean the last. I mean, if you think about it, the last game they had, Dejounte Murray hit a game winning three against mm-hmm. you know, uh, Atlanta is at home. Uh, but I, I think Miami, you know, I mean, those games against Philly and against Indiana, even though they went down, I mean, it still came down to the wire. Um, mm-hmm. And it's more than likely probably going to be a clutch game where Miami wins by 10. If they lose this game, um, obviously it makes for a very awkward situation in the locker room and post game. Um, but I, I think that they come out on top of that. If they lose this game, they're going to be the eight. Like, I mean, that's that's really where it's at. I mean, if they lose this game, they are going to have to go to Philly or Indiana, more likely Philly, but could be either of them based on the schedules. 
And then if they don't win that road game, now the good thing is they've been better on the road than at home this year for the most part. But if they don't win that road game, like they're not going to be, I mean, they'll be like five point underdogs against Philadelphia on the road in that playing game. And then if they lose that one, you're getting Boston in the first round. And and look, I, I know there's a fan sentiment out there that like, okay, let's get Boston right away. I can tell you, I can tell you, and you're, you're, and you're shaking your head too, Eternal, because you've probably talked to the same person I have. I can tell you, okay, that's not the sentiment of the front office. Like they would rather, like they'd rather get Boston down the line when they're playing in rhythm than because think about it. If you are, if you're going to get Boston, it's because you didn't win your first play in game. And then you had to rally to beat again, Atlanta or Chicago, just like last year with Chicago. Uh, you, it's not like you're playing well going into that series, right? Like, like you, you basically put yourself in this position. I don't think your confidence is going to be that high. Like the, the object should be to delay Boston as long as possible. Like I'm not saying they can't beat Boston if they're playing at the highest level and playoff Jimmy reappears magically and all that. But first round, no. no. I mean, you think about it, guys. Uh, you think about Boston came very, very close to getting the seven-game series against Atlanta last year. Um, mm -hmm. Had Atlanta executed at the end in game six, we're very well looking at a game seven back in Boston, and who knows how that plays out. Uh, there were some things that Atlanta kind of gave them some trouble on. The issue is with the Heat, When and my concern with them, um, which I didn't get a chance to really talk to Bam about. I wanted to talk to him about it, but the time was short. But the execution issues that they've been having in the clutch, right? Like now the high executive, I did get to talk about that with. Right. Like they've been having issues um, kind of executing on both ends um, and having some slippage that really costed them last year. They were a different clutch team, but a large part of that was Jimmy finishing second as clutch player of the year. Right. Um, affecting the game on both ends of the floor. So the thing obviously rides and dies on Jimmy's shoulder. Um, you can have the best of what you can get out of um your edges right as Ethan like to say but you know it really depends on Jimmy and one thing I feel like we don't really talk about uh as far as Jimmy goes as far as if he cares if he if his body is breaking down which I think somewhat of it is physical is Jimmy is also dealing with a death this year and who knows how long that grief is still bothering him so good point put that you know put that out there Alice, I'm gonna let you close. I, I I do think that is something we've overlooked at times this year. I mean, yeah. I, they did get, and you you've mentioned that a lot, Eternal, and I, I think that's that's a fair thing to mention. Um, I, I it's just when I see him on the floor, it, it's not so much just the disinterest. It's 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 the inability to get to spots and elevate over people and and take advantage of mismatches the way that he did prior to Josh Hart falling on his ankle. I, I just I, it doesn't. I think that the where you're talking about like four, you know, three long playoff runs in the last four years. Then you go to the Tibbs minutes before that, which I said was not a big deal when they acquired him because he didn't have long playoff runs, at least not like LeBron had when he'd come to Miami. But I, I just think we're seeing it's all of it. Honestly, it's all of it. I, I think I think it's physical. I think it's emotional. I think it's mental. I think it's frustration, maybe with not getting enough help to sort of carry during the regular season. But basically, what we're seeing now is a guy who is not. I, I just keep saying he's just not a one A because a one A is the best player on the floor most nights, and and he was last year. To kind of kind of to your point before you let Alice go, if you think about the timeline, and I did get to talk to Jason Jackson about this, um, the Heat coming out of the bubble. They took first off, they took like what six months off right before they played again. Then they had to ramp back up. And that's not how athletes, pro athlete bodies work. You don't right. you don't train and then go for a period sure. of time and then stop out of nowhere and then try to ramp that back up. Um, and then you only get six weeks off and then have to try to do that. And that and if people remember that 2021 team, uh, they had, I believe, Duncan had COVID at one point. Mm -hmm. Jimmy had COVID at one point. Tyler, Tyler um, had COVID. None had right. COVID. Uh, I mean, there was, uh, yeah, no, it's no, it, it's been, uh, it's been a lot. It, it, it's been a lot, but again, there are no excuses. Organization, oh, sure. and 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 they should not be in the play-in in the eight spot. I, I just, this is where I'm at. Alex, take take us home. 
Well, so I, I, how far they're going to be in the play in? Let's just assume that. Um, how, how far can they go? Are, are you are you a are you of the belief that they can you know repeat what they did last year? Or what do you think the ceiling is for them in the postseason? Two things are very very important. I think. I think. Well, I'll I'll say two and a half things. I think Jimmy returning to at least 21-22 form. It doesn't have to be last year, but 21-22 form, if he can return to that, that that increases your odds by at least 30 to 40%. The rest of that is what can you get out of Terry Rozier and Duncan yeah. Robinson. If you can get a hot like what you got, you know, prior to, you know, the neck injury bothering Terry, if you can get that from Terry and a lot of what we've seen from Duncan Robinson in this year, I do think that is enough with everybody else playing their roles to kind of carry you through a couple of series. But knocking on wood, let's really hope that this is the this is the playoff run that Jimmy stays healthy for the duration of the playoff run. Because the last two playoff runs were basically ended, you know, even though they made it to the finals, even though they made it to the Eastern Conference finals, um, you had Peyton Pritchard pulling on Jimmy's knee um, in the 21-22 Eastern Conference Finals. You had the second round Josh Hart thing, which, you know, like who knows how that those things play out differently if Jimmy doesn't have those type of injuries. But uh, Jimmy being, of course, you know, back to that level, Terry playing at that level, and Duncan being what we've seen this season, I think gives Miami a high chance to go deep into the playoffs. I'm looking at some of the comments here before we close. We do want to thank our sponsors, uh, 305jerseys.com and, of course, Water Cleanup in Florida. Uh, this one from uh, from Stan uh, Gill, stop making excuses. Jimmy just doesn't play all out with the don't care mentality yet. Again, we're going to see if there's a ramp up here in the postseason. I mean, look, the playoffs tell. Those are Pat Riley's favorite three words, the playoffs tell. You And with Jimmy Butler, they've told a really good story, you know, three of the past four, four postseasons. We'll see if we get that again. And this from Taylor Santana. We had four, five years, and in those five years, Jimmy took us to two finals appearances at three Eastern Conference finals. However, we need a solid big to get us over the hump. Well, they have one solid big. The question is whether they need another. Um, and I think, and I know Eternal agrees with this, uh, I think Niko, Niko Jovic may be that guy uh, as we go forward here. But a reshuffling is probably in order. Oh, yeah. This offseason. All right. Thanks to Eternal. He'll be at the game tonight. Thanks to Alex. Uh, if you're listening to this on the five on the floor feed, we appreciate you there as well. Make sure that you catch Alex and I every Tuesday and Thursday here on the YouTube channel. Thank you, Eternal. Thank you. Thanks, Eternal.